fact that we still linger with the question of what happened. What happened so suddenly that 29 men apparently never had a chance for survival in Lake Superior on November 10th of 1975. That date in early November of 1975 will forever be remembered in the state of Michigan. It was on that night that the Edmund Fitzgerald battled the rough waters of Lake Superior as the skies of November turned gloomy. That was a battle she would ultimately lose just shy of Whitefish Bay. While the Fitz was just one of over 6,000 vessels that sit at the bottom of the Great Lakes, it always seems to garner the most attention from Michigan natives, myself included. So what makes the Fitzgerald stand out? I talked to former TV5 reporter Rick Mixter for that answer. There's a couple of points. The first is it's modern, 1975. The second is everybody disappeared. You know, even 1958, when the Bradley went down on Lake Michigan, they found most of the crew, sadly, just two survivors. In 66, off the tip of the thumb, the uh, Morel went down. Most of the crew was found. So how was it in 75 that 29 guys completely vanished? And then, of course, that piqued the interest of a Canadian songwriter named Gordon Lightfoot, who wrote a song that went to number two on the charts in 1976. So the legend, I think, was really born then. The legend of the Fitzgerald may have been born then, but the Witch of November, as Lightfoot called it, had already been well known. Let's take a trip to the First Warren 5 Weather Center for a closer look. The Witch of November refers to powerful storm systems that develop during the month of November. Often see these systems track across the Great Lakes region after getting themselves organized east of the Rockies. They're where cold air masses from Canada meet warm and humid air masses from the Gulf of Mexico. As these storm systems develop, they ride the jet stream into the region where they feed off the warm waters of the Great Lakes allowing them to intensify more than they otherwise would. That brings strong winds and waves to the Great Lakes, in addition to any rain or snow that might develop. The storm that sunk the Edmund Fitzgerald was no different. The storm system that would ultimately be responsible for sinking the Edmund Fitzgerald was developing in central Kansas. This was occurring around the time that the Edmund Fitzgerald and the Arthur M. Anderson were getting ready to leave their ports. It was also around that time that the National Weather Service issued their first warning for the night, a gale warning. That was for winds expected to be around 45 knots or so. The captains both acknowledged that warning to very experienced mariners at the helm of both ships. Now that warning did cause them to take more of a northerly route across Lake Superior. They were hoping for some protection from those Canadian highlands to avoid the worst of the storm. But it was pretty clear after they left that things were taking a turn for the worse for the night. The National Weather Service ultimately ended up upgrading that warning to a storm warning. That was for northwest winds around 50 knots and waves around 8 to 16 feet. Both captains again, very experienced, started to become concerned for the night ahead. As they made that turn off to the southeast in northern Lake Superior, that area of low pressure was moving off to the north very quickly, ultimately turning the winds to more of a northwesterly direction. And it wasn't long after that, around 5 p.m., the Arthur M. Anderson reported 75 knot gusts and also waves of around 12 to 18 feet. Now, this weather not unheard of at this time of year for the Great Lakes. We also had some similar storm systems. November 9th through the 11th of 1998 featured winds of 44 miles per hour and waves of 20 to 25 feet. November 23rd and 25th of 2001, we had winds of 55 miles per hour and waves of 25 feet. And October 26th through 27th of just 2010 had winds of around 78 miles per hour and waves of 27 feet. In the case of the Fitzgerald, it could have been something as simple as being in the wrong place at the wrong time. For strong waves, we need three ingredients. We need a strong wind. That wind also has to be persistent along with the strength. And we've also got to have a long fetch or just a fancy way of saying distance over water. It sort of allows that wind to build up momentum and lead to some pretty strong waves. And ultimately, it appears that's what ended up sinking the Edmund Fitzgerald. That happened around 7 p.m. that night where Captain McSorley reported we're holding our own. And that was the last communication ever received from the Fitz. It's around that time that winds were estimated to be gusting around 80 to 85 miles per hour and perhaps the waves as tall as 25 and a half feet and those were just the significant wave heights. The peak rogue waves could have been one and a half to even two times that height. It sank 17 miles from Whitefish Point. That was the last communication ever received from the Edmund Fitzgerald. She now rests 530 feet below the surface of Lake Superior. And while it's clear that weather was a challenge that night when the Witch of November came stealing, Rick Mixter says no one knows for sure what actually caused her to go down. It's completely up to, you know, to debate. Some people say it was a series of three storms or the three sisters. Some still believe holding on to the false feeling that it somehow ran aground and that's where it you know, wrecked its bottom and it couldn't recover from there. Still other people just believe it was 
was that single wave that pushed them under. And others are now kind of hinting that there was a structural failure too, that the ship had been not upkept very well and that was part of the problem too. I don't think we'll ever know now.